Hey guys, today I got a package in the mail from the Nords. Hey guys, welcome back to DOS Storm. So I do have a package here and it is indeed from Sweden. First, you're probably wondering what's in the package or maybe you know what's in the package because of the title of the video. But either way, I'm gonna tell you a story about how this came to be. So high in the mountains of Sweden, there lives a man named David, who with his collective group of graybeards study in the arts, the ancient arts, mystical arts of old sound cards, and they recreate them for the public to buy out of the goodness of their hearts. Well, they probably make a little money off of it, but you know, not everyone's doing this. They spend every day training in the mystical arts of the OPL2 chip, and they do all kinds of cool workouts in the mountains and the cold and stuff. While I can't verify that 100% of my statements were true, I can verify that in this box is indeed a Sound Blaster 2 replica. So first I'm gonna start off by saying this isn't some specialty product that only certain people can get. Uh, you can run out and buy this right now if you want, and it's available on David's website. He actually has Gravis Ultrasound clones as well, but I'm gonna be covering this in this video and maybe we'll check out the Gravis Ultrasound one in another one. But right now, let's get this thing out of its box and check it out. Okay, so I have the package here and some snipping utensils. So let's open it up. Okay, so no way. So I was not... <laughs> He said he sent, I mean, oh, wow, okay, wow, that is awesome. So yeah, I wasn't expecting that. To be clear, I did just order the Sound Blaster 2.0 clone. However, there were some supply issues with the brackets and shipping was delayed, so he threw in the Gus as a gift. A very kind gesture considering the supply issues were beyond his control anyway. It won't be wasted on me though, and I look forward to testing this card in the future. So make sure to subscribe if you wanna see that. On to the main event though. This is David's Sound Blaster 2.0 clone, which you might think would be based on the Snark Barker, but is actually his own design. If you're unfamiliar with the Snark Barker, all you really need to know is that it's a community GitHub project for building your own Sound Blaster 1.0 clone. However, David's design is based on the Sound Blaster 2 design instead of the Sound Blaster 1.0, and it even manages to pack in a few improvements. You'll notice, apart from the DSP, OPL2, and CMS chips, wherever possible, modern components were used in this design. In theory, this will likely result in less noise and higher reliability, which is good stuff. He also added jumpers on board to switch the type of output. The default mode is amplified mode, which allows the output level to be adjusted with a potentiometer on the back of the bracket. Alternatively, using the line level mode will disable the volume knob and output to line level. Also of note, this card uses an 8-bit ISA bus, but he also makes an MCA variant. However, despite these improvements, what you're getting is a 100% compatible clone of the Sound Blaster 2.0. This means it has all the weaknesses and strengths of the original card, which is part of the charm since everything will sound exactly like it did in 1991. So you'll get OPL2 FM synthesis, digital sound up to 44 kilohertz sampling rate in mono, support for the Creative Music System, or CMS, and 100% compatibility with pretty much every DOS game in existence. The support for CMS on this card is sort of interesting to me at least. If you don't know what CMS is, it's the precursor to the original Sound Blaster that came out in 1987. The music it produces, to me at least, sounds kind of like a Nintendo Game Boy. I'm not an expert or anything, but it's definitely certified bleepy bloopy music. So onto my test system here, while this card is probably better suited to something like a 486 and Windows 3.1, I ended up using my Windows 98 test system to record the samples. If you were using MS-DOS or Windows 3.1, 
the real creative drivers for this card should work just fine. After all, the computer really can't tell the difference between this and a real Sound Blaster 2.0. Anyway, here are some samples of it running, a few DOS games, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on this thing at the end of the video. So after listening to the samples, there really isn't much to say. It looks kind of like a Sound Blaster 2, and it sounds just like it. If you're interested in buying one of these, I encourage you to check out David's website linked below. And because David has mad dedication to the old school arts, you'll notice that the website is old school as well, so it works on older PCs and devices. Now you may be wondering about price, and at $100 these may not seem dreadfully cheap. However, I think that it is fairly priced for a custom product that is replicating something that is verging on becoming unobtainium. Even if you did manage to find a used Sound Blaster 2.0, it likely wouldn't include the CMS chips, its components have been aging for 30 plus years, and it would end up costing you more anyway. I think as time goes on, alternatives like this are essential to experiencing the past. And if you ever wanted to try a real Sound Blaster 2.0, this will get you as close to the real thing as possible. Well, that just about does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more content about DOS, nonsense, or sound cards, you really should subscribe. You can also check me out on Twitter, Ko-Fi, and Patreon if that's your thing. But for now, hasta la pasta, and I'll see you in the next one.